welcome back to another Money Tip Monday. Today we are here to talk about house hacking and how to make your primary residences income generating. You can tell I'm here with a guest who is a wonderful friend and past client, Serge Lupescu, and he has an awesome YouTube channel that we'll get into later. I want you guys to follow him on how he's turned a property into a group home, which also income generates. But today we're gonna to be talking about what he's doing with his primary residence and how you can use it to help yourself house hack. Before we get into that though, I do need you to go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, so that way I know that the content that we're putting out to you is helpful and not just a bunch of garbage. So let's jump right in. So for those of you who've been following me on my house owning, house owning journey, um, you know that I started buying primary residences, living them for two years, and then upgrading. It's called move up buying. Now it's an awesome way to invest in real estate because it allows you to purchase properties with minimum down and then grow your portfolio over time. Now it's been an awesome way for me to start my portfolio and it's actually the very first investments I ever made before the stock market, before a 401k, before any other investments. I did this method to get ahead. Now, today we're gonna to talk to Serge though, because since those times back in the early 2000s, there's so many different ways of house hacking, especially now with concepts like fire. People are like living in one room of their house, renting out the rest of them, buying houses with casitas, buying multifamily residences, um, starting businesses like group homes out of their houses. And there's so many different ways of house hacking so that you're buying a primary residence and having other people pay your mortgage. I mean, it's really, really incredible. We just did your home loan. So a couple mm -hmm. things, right? Um, one, how did you find your real estate agent? Obviously your real estate agent recommended me, right. but like, where did you start looking for this? Like, did you type in house hacking? Was this just an idea that you had? Like, how did this whole thing come up for you? So I watch a lot of Graham Stephan videos. Okay, Graham, okay. And I've just been watching him for years. Okay. And so this whole house hacking thing has always just been in the back of my mind. And I knew that my first property, that's what I was gonna do. And so one night I was just at my group home and I was watching YouTube videos, but I was essentially looking at different ways of financing. Okay. So I was looking at like FHA down payment assistance. I was looking at conventional, just just to kind of kind of gather more information, mm -hmm. pretty much. And so when I did that, uh, Javier popped up <laughs> when I searched FHA down payment assistance, and his video popped up. And so I started watching his videos, and then I realized I think in one of his videos he mentioned that he's here in Phoenix. And so I was like light bulb. And when that happened, I just went into his description and found his email and his number and everything and hit him up on all of it. Like, I mean, I texted him, called him, emailed him, even DM'd him, everything. Cause I knew I was <laughs> All like, methods of communication. Yeah. Cause I knew he was a busy guy and everybody's busy nowadays. And so I had to stand out a little bit differently and that was my way of standing out. And so I did that. And then from there we set up a meeting and we met and he took his initial assessment of what I was looking for, what I was wanting to do. Uh, once we kind of discussed all that, he then told me to come here. So you follow Graham Stephan, you found Javier, Javier leads you to me. Mm -hmm. um, like, did you know immediately that you wanted to find a house with a casita? Because yes. for, for those of you who obviously do not know about his personal purchase, right? He bought a home with a casita Right, and his big plan is he lives full time in this casita and then he does vacation rentals or Airbnbs with the primary house. So he is living in this property. This is his main residence, right? So he's qualified for owner occupant financing. And, um, but he's able to income generate, which is the whole like house hacking like theme. I mean, this is insane. So for me, like, how did you know to find that? So I, I essentially told Javier, hey, this is what I'm looking for. Because, uh, long story short, I won't get into it, but I was technically living in my car for six months because I was like, I want to save up money. Okay, again, another millennial concept, right? I'm just <laughs> going to live in my car so I don't pay any rent. I mean, so honestly, yeah. like... I also am a big YouTuber. Like I just love like searching the channels and I have seen so many people living out of their car. It's called like 
it's like the minimalism living. Yeah, right? so like, I actually, before wanting to find the house, I was gonna actually purchase a van, like one of those Sprinter vans that were converted. It's like this tiny so home called, concept. Yep, it's van right. life is what it's called. And I am a huge like advocate for like being outdoors and being active and living like super minimalistic and pretty much have the same shirts in all my YouTube videos, but it's all good. No judgment. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Uh, but too. <laughs> I, for me, I just, I don't need a lot to be happy. And that's the whole idea. I, at one point when I was shopping with Javier, I said, dude, listen, I don't even need a shower. It's fine. I can go to the gym and shower. I don't need the casita to have like a full blown kitchen. Just so you know, your house isn't livable without a working bathroom. I know, know I know, but like, I, you know, I have the group home <laughs> in the back. Like, I, I know, but just so that people was, like yeah. out there know you cannot finance a house that doesn't have a working bathroom. Yeah. So I just want you to be prepared, even though this guy's like a total like survivalist, <laughs> like it's not practical for financing, but it I do love yeah. that though. Yeah. So, okay. so. You, you, so you basically know that this is what you're looking for. You're looking yeah. for like a property with two different things. So either an attached apartment or a mother-in-law suite mm -hmm. or a casita in the back or maybe a basement. I mean, there's all varieties of different yeah. ways, um, but you knew you wanted to live separate from the people that you were airbnb on, yeah. right? I mean, that's huge. One thing I love about this concept is that you don't have to be a landlord that has to drive anywhere. If something happens to your property, it's right there. It's easy mm -hmm. to access. You'd have to fix it anyway. Um, one of the reasons that I don't own a bunch of rental properties anymore is because it was such a hassle for me personally. And um, at the time, for whatever reason, uh, I, my money mindset was I didn't want to pay for a property manager, which makes no sense. I yeah. digress. Um, but so like, I love that concept of just being really close, being separated, exactly. right? And you know, in, in Arizona, what's huge, and I do want to get into this too, is we have a huge population of people who come in here just to winter. So Airbnb here in Phoenix is just this wonderful opportunity to maximize yeah. the investment on your home. I know so many different people who actually rent out their primary residences completely. Like they own one property with no attached unit or no casino in the back. They just go live with mom and dad for, you know, the winter and they just rent out their house. Yeah. Like, or they do it when Super Bowl was here. I mean, I felt like everybody I knew was doing that or like spring training. I mean, it's so, so yeah, like how you, much- That's where you bump up the prices. Okay. The so then what's the strategy on yeah. like Airbnb? Yeah, so the whole strategy behind Airbnb, and this is something that I had to really consider aside from having the mother-in-law suite, and that was, was it gonna work in that specific area as well as others? And so for instance, you know, Phoenix is massive, and so you got all the sub areas, right, with Gilbert and Chandler. So, okay, just out of curiosity, have you already rented your property? I mean, because it hasn't yeah. really been that long, and it's super hot here. Yeah, so, Essentially, as soon as I, I had, I told myself two weeks deadline is when I'm going to get the home listed on Airbnb. I was like, meaning from closing to getting all the furniture in. Oh my God, weeks. you're hilarious. No wonder you were so anxious to close and move in. Yeah. So like, I'm just a very like, let's get things done. Let's get okay. this thing going. So, cause you got to consider opportunity cost. So that just like really blows my mind because I would think that like, there's no way anyone would want to rent or vacation here in the summer. Yeah, and that's what I said too. And so essentially, you know, the whole idea is you just want to get put, right? But are you doing your research? Like you found, like you researched Phoenix Airbnb in July and you're like, oh, people do come here. Yeah, so there are a couple different like platforms that you can use or apps. That or did you, were you just like, I'm going to do this. I know it's a really, really great you know, vacation rental spot in the winter time, I'm just gonna list this home as fast as humanly possible and just see what happens. Mm -hmm. Was yeah. that the whole? Yeah, so that was the whole concept. Okay. And yeah, essentially after I listed it, five nights later, got my first guest. Five freaking yeah. nights, dude? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, and then another guest <laughs> the next night. So up until now, I've had five, six guests. Six guests, yeah. Oh my I gosh. have one coming tonight. And then, nice. Yeah. So. So like, what happened? They just knock on your house. <laughs> no. You know? No, it's pretty hands off. Okay. Surprisingly, um, okay. I have the Nest Yell Lock. Oh, okay. And that works like a charm. Well, 
the people that want to do Do this. they know that you're like in the background? <laughs> no, no, no. So I have... <laughs> Sorry, I, I have, just like all these weird things just go up on It's a great question. I have in the description that don't bother the casita, the, casita, the mother-in-law suite, which has its own separate entrance. So, okay, so I just have that in my description and in the house rules so that you can see that when they okay. go to the book No, and I'm sure that that's not like super uncommon. Yeah. So, okay, quick question for you. So like what can somebody expect like to earn per stay? First day, it all comes down to like right now, like you said, it's 110 degrees here in Phoenix. It's a slow season for us. Sure. So you have to be competitive with the, what the other listings are doing, right? So it can, right now, it's varying for my specific property anywhere from like 80 to $150 per night. Okay, which is that's the base. Much. That's the base price. And then you got cleaning fees and other things that you can put in there to increase your revenue. Okay, so here's what's cool about that, right? Like you have to live somewhere. So the cost of what you'd be paying already for rent or whatever for your mortgage, right, is what you would anticipate anyway in your normal household budget. And so this is just in addition. So this is just income on top of that. It is not to make it so that your house is affordable, right? When you're owning and occupying a property, you have to feel comfortable paying that property regardless of whether or not you have one Airbnb tenant or not. Okay, so I just really, really, really want to have that point drive home because you should definitely not buy a property to consider Airbnb if you do not feel comfortable with that payment, right? Yeah. So with him, he feels 100% comfortable. He has a business that can fully support that. He lives in the property. He's maintaining it. You know, his utilities are probably fairly low because you're only really like cooling just the one part or do you actually because are they attached they're not attached okay separate. right so i mean there's ways that you can minimize the household expenses but overall like he's prepared to pay that mortgage regardless because that's where he lives just to kind of hit it home what do you expect to earn on the on season on the on season i'm expecting seven to eight thousand wow and that starts like roughly in september it starts going down until about april so this is really insane. So is that seven thousand a month or seven thousand for the whole on season? A month. You guys, that is seriously insane. So when you think of the average person saves less than three thousand dollars a month, the fact that his one primary residence will earn him seven thousand dollars a month and he can still live there, I mean, like three months of that is, you know, literally someone's income for a year. I mean, that's so insane. This is definitely the definition of house hacking. Yeah. Arizona is an awesome place to do Airbnbs. I mean, yeah. you are so awesome for even thinking about doing that, taking the plunge. I mean, I don't want to say how young you are, but like, I mean, it is so neat that this is your very first purchase. You're making it work in every yeah. single way possible for you. Yeah. And um, God, I'm so proud to know you. Thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah, it's fun though. For me, it's more like, I think when I was like at signing, like, aren't you scared? I was like, for what? Like, this is gonna make me money. Like, I'm not scared of that. So, well, you definitely money. don't have any money mindset issues. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, Phoenix is a great area, and they don't have very many Airbnb laws here. Oh, but, yeah, Airbnb. Okay, that's a really so. Okay, so just our final segue then. Um, if, if somebody watching this video wanted to get into Airbnb as a house hack, right? Um, what are your like top three things? Yeah. So first thing is quality pictures. Like make sure you don't just take something off your iPhone. Okay. So, quality pictures. Um, make sure you do your market analysis, make sure that it's actually going to work really well in that area. And do your research. Like yes. he knows a lot about Airbnb laws in Arizona, what cities were the best ones, which ones had the highest rent. I mean, when he's talking about a market analysis, he has done his homework on what's going to make the highest return on investment. And then also have a exit strategy. So if Airbnb doesn't pan out like you thought it would, make sure you can rent it out long term. Right. So this is really crucial. So his strategy, guys, just to map this out, he lives in it, so he got owner-occupant financing with minimal down. This can also be done with investment financing and with second home financing too, just so that you know. Uh, you just have to follow the guidelines for that particular financing. Uh, but his strategy is, I'm gonna live here no matter what, so worst case scenario, this is what I can afford on my monthly budget. 
Now, if this is a rental property for you, right, you're buying this as an investment, you never have plans of living there, you need to know, does your Airbnb return, is that going to make enough sense? Or does this need to be a long-term rental? Like you just need to have an A and B strategy because life happens. And then the third thing would be just make sure, you know, you have a system in place, which I, I'm starting to work my system right now, um, you know, cleaners and all that. So as soon as you can get a system in place and it's, you can do it pretty quickly. So what he's talking about just to kind of help people understand, it's like, so what is your process for bringing in potential tenants and then cleaning up after them and setting it up for the new right. tenants, right? So your cleaning, your like maintenance, your deferred maintenance, right? Because there's immediate things like things they just broke in your property and then things you know will have to be done. Right, yeah. So those are the main things, I would say my top three things awesome. of essentially starting Airbnb. Um, so far it's been great. I mean, I can't, uh, I don't mind the cleaning. I love listening to podcasts and all that. So. Oh my God, he's doing his own cleaning. You are such a millennial. <laughs> I just can't get over this. Yeah, so I mean, I did hire a cleaner and stuff when I was out of town. But you really wanted to save money. So I wanted to say, hey, that cleaning fee. I'll tell you what, hey, you know up. what? Hey, I love this. I freaking love this. Yeah. Okay, so guys, I hope that you found a ton of value in this. You can. I'm sure he's gonna be posting his Airbnb journey somewhere on his YouTube channel in yeah. the future definitely go seek him out. He's a wealth of knowledge, the most friendly person I have met this year. Aww, Seriously, I'm so excited. The world to no, and it's the truth. Yeah. You can find him, Serge Lupescu. His contact information will be in the show notes. Tune in next week, guys, for another Money Tip Monday. Thank you so much for tuning in.